Hi, I'm Jen Kovnatz, Product Manager on the Google Maps APIs. There are a million websites out there that have a Google Map on them. These have been built using the JavaScript Maps API. They're helping people figure out where to go for dinner, show off their marathon training, or keep up to date with the latest news on natural disasters. A map is a great tool to help your users visualize the world around them. And the Google Maps JavaScript API lets you craft and mold these maps, presenting your own data in beautiful and compelling ways. Maps can be used just to plot a single feature or a whole host of data. If you plan to include a map on your website to display more than a single feature at a time, then you might be very interested in using the data layer in the JavaScript Maps API. The data layer gives you a way to structure and visualize your geographic data sets and has built-in support for GeoJSON. Now let's dive into some demos that show just how easy it is to map and work with data sets using the data layer as an example of what you can do yourself. Say we wanted to build a map to show how earthquakes are distributed across the globe. We would go over to the United States Geological Survey's website and grab a GeoJSON file containing information on every earthquake in the world over the last 24 hours. It would contain useful context like the location and the magnitude of each earthquake. Now with a data set of this size, I'd usually have to parse the GeoJSON myself, instantiate a marker for each earthquake, and then plot them all on the map individually. But using the data layer, I can load and visualize the data on the map in just one line of code. Ta-da! The beauty of the data layer is that it provides you the structure to let you handle your set of data like a set. You don't have to go through the hassle of handcrafting a version of collections over and over again just to handle simple things like instantiation, iteration, and the ongoing manipulation of data. Hence, the single line of code. The other thing that it's doing is loading data onto the map directly from GeoJSON at full fidelity. Let's take a look at another example that takes full advantage of this. So the next thing I wanted to do is not just see where the earthquakes were, but also get a sense of their size. This was really easy to do by setting a simple styling rule. It basically goes, hey data layer, make each point into a circle where the radius scales with the magnitude of each quake. And it just did it. I didn't have to iterate through all the features myself. Instead, I was able to set the style declaratively. This makes my code really clean. The other thing that's happening here is that the data layer still contains the properties that the original GeoJSON file came with. Prior to the data layer, the minute you would load data onto a map, it was reduced to just what you could see. You'd have features, their icons, styles, the location, maybe some content for the info window. But things in the real world usually have so many other properties. This is really valuable pieces of data, and you might want to use them in creating how your map looks and feels. Let's take a moment to jump into the wonderful world of GeoJSON. GeoJSON is great to work with. There are a lot of formats out there for geographic data. Some of the biggies are KML, shapefiles, GeoRSS, and GeoJSON. Personally, I like working with GeoJSON because it's so easy to read and edit and just mentally parse. It's an open standard that's emerged as a favorite for sharing and collaborating on geographic data online. Now, if you're familiar with GeoJSON, then the structure of GeoJSON should be pretty easy to grok. Notice that you have a set of features, each of which has a geometry. This can be points, lines, and polygons, and an arbitrary set of properties. For me, it's really in these properties that make the combination of GeoJSON and the data layer super powerful. When we first loaded the Earthquakes GeoJSON file on the map, these properties were preserved. So in the last example, that magnitude information for each earthquake was actually loaded and used in the map to, circle the cir to, to size the circle icons. It wasn't just thrown away. So jumping back to the demo, another thing I want to point out is that the beauty of the declarative styling approach is it's really easy to set a number of style rules at once. All you have to do is add another rule. Again, in this case, we're setting the size in addition to the color. My code is really clean. The data layer also makes combining data from a few different sources really easy and can be used for any kind of geometry. Let's look at another demo to show this off. So in this map, we wanted to do a visual analysis of education levels across the United States. So first, we loaded the geometries for each state in the US from Google Maps Engine via its API, and it returns GeoJSON. Using the data layer, we could draw these polygons on the map. Then, we loaded the US Census Bureau data on high school education levels by state. By mixing these two sources of information, we were able to color our states based on their levels of high school education. And what's really nice is that because the data layer is drawn to the client, we can make it dynamic and interactive by adding lovely hover effects. You should try this yourself. It's worth pointing out, too, that while GeoJSON is really cool, you can also create data layers manually and add data to them programmatically, regardless of what format the data started in. 
You might want this if you like the sound of handling your data sets as objects, and if you want to do declarative styling on them. The data layer is a developer's tool. It's designed to make your code cleaner and your life easier. So if you're creating a map to show a data set, the magic of the data layer is going to give you consistent structure and hooks for your data, unlocking things like declarative styling, semantics of the data load right in the map by way of properties, enabling you to use this information in crafting the map, and native GeoJSON support, which makes loading a data set ridiculously fast and easy. Take a look at the data layer documentation linked to here to get started. One of our teammates wrote a great walkthrough of the US Census demo. The code for all the rest of the demos can be found here. And do take a look at geojson.io, a website that lets you generate GeoJSON on the fly with just a couple simple drawing tools. Thanks for listening. Check us out on Google Plus or tweet at us if you have a cool project that uses the data layer. We would love to see it. Cheers.